There were a lot of failures that day. 19 children killed along with two teachers. The second deadliest school shooting in U.S. history. We expect our police officers to run toward the danger. And we now know that's not what happened. He was treated as a barricaded subject, and instead it should have been treated as an active shooter. That's plain and simple. When it came to the moment of truth, they failed. Ah. He's in the class. The last thing you expect to hear is that 77 minutes went by before anyone reached that classroom. You had children calling on their cell phone, asking for help. I'm in classroom 112. Please help me. There's a lot of dead bodies. Please. <laughs> The horrific events at Robb Elementary in Uvalde, Texas, stunned a community and the nation. As the world watched in those first hours and days after the shooting, officials made a series of misstatements and inaccuracies. They showed amazing courage by running toward gunfire. They did contain them in the classroom and they put the tactical stack together, you know, in a very orderly way and, of course, breached. But Governor Abbott and the Department of Public Safety Director Steve McCraw eventually said they were misled by local officials. The idea that this was an heroic and well done and well and effective and efficient operation was not the case. And when we determined that it was not the case, we reported otherwise. It was time to deliver answers to the people of Uvalde. Eva Guzman, a former justice of the Texas Supreme Court, served on the investigative committee formed because of concern that the public was not getting a true account of events at Rob. The committee points to Dia Street, where the gunman lived just blocks away from Rob Elementary with his grandparents, because less than 10 minutes before the attacker crashed a truck in the ravine outside the school, he shot his own grandmother at home. Dia Street will forever, I think, remain embedded in the minds of Uvalde citizens as the place where this tragedy began. The attacker messages an acquaintance, I just shot my grandma in her head and I'ma go shoot up an elementary school right now. An online acquaintance in Germany responds, cool. He then steals his grandmother's truck and the grandmother seeks help. Her reaction was not to call 911, it was to run across the street to a neighbor. In fact, a 911 call from Dia Street doesn't come in until nearly 15 minutes after the attacker shot his grandmother and when he's already inside the school. Anytime there is criminal activity this close to a school, there ought to be an effort to immediately notify the school. But because of that delay, neither police nor Rob Elementary knew about that shooting before the gunman arrived at the school. Those seven to nine minutes could have made a difference. We'll never know. It'll always be a what if. The committee raised questions about the law enforcement response to Dia Street and why Uvalde County Sheriff Ruben Nolasco appeared on this scene, stayed, and was delayed in arriving to the Robb Elementary attack. And inside the school, it turns out there were distinct opportunities to breach the classroom that were missed. I'm certain I heard him reload. I did hear that at one time. I don't know if it, there was a second. A law enforcement officer hears a suspect reloading their firearm. It should say two things to that officer. One, that the threat is not over, and two, that may be an opportunity to immediately breach and engage. And there were other failures and missteps. Time spent hunting for keys to the classroom door that had been reported broken and never fixed. It could have been opened without a key. We know that if there had not been these systemic failures, that if one person had responded differently at any moment, maybe the outcome could have been different. 
Less than 24 hours after the attack, during an interview with investigators, Chief Pete Arredondo explains his decisions that day. I had students that were around there that weren't in the immediate threat besides the ones that I know were in the immediate threat mm -hmm. and the preservation of life around everything around him, I felt was priority because I know there was probably victims in there and with the shots I heard, I, I know it's probably somebody who's going to be deceased. I know these weren't. In law enforcement, you can't assume that they're not going to survive. You have to assume that they could have survived if you get in there immediately and address the threat. In total, 376 law enforcement officers responded to the attack on Robb Elementary that day. We failed to prevent it from happening. And I say failed, and I said we, and I said the law enforcement community, because collectively we did. The Texas Rangers under Steve McCraw at the Texas Department of Public Safety have completed their initial investigation, which is now honing in on culpability and possible criminal charges. A final version of the report will go to the Uvalde County District Attorney. You have one chance to get this right, and it is very important for the decision to prosecute to be based on all of the evidence. The investigation is examining the actions of every law enforcement officer who responded that day. And sources tell ABC News the focus is on the law enforcement leadership who were there that day and the decisions made in the critical first moments. Based on that information, we can make an intelligent decision about what crimes may have been committed. It may take even more months to learn whether any law enforcement officials might be charged with crimes for what happened on May 24, 2022. But the top lawman in Texas says it's a real possibility. My belief is there's possible criminal culpability. Certainly there's malfeasance committed that particular day. And from our standpoint, looking at every officer and looking internally at our own officers, is that you know, what did they know? When did they hear? When did they arrive? What did they do at that point in time? Alongside many of the other victims' families, Jackie Casares' family is channeling their grief, pushing for stronger gun control laws. They were recently briefed on the autopsy report for their daughter. They say from what they know, it appears to show that Jackie was shot in one of the gunmen's final barrage of shots before the breach while all those officers were standing in the hallways. Because of her injury, she would have bled out quickly. And if she was shot at the very beginning, then she wouldn't have had a pulse at the end of the 77 minutes. And she did, she was still alive. What does that tell you? So that for sure tells me that if the cops would have gone in when they should have, then my daughter would still be here with me today. Our thanks to John and the entire team. Crisis of Command is streaming now on Hulu. And for an extended cut and a complete look at our Uvalde 365 coverage, go to abcnews.com. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.